Take your seats, please. We're going to begin in one minute. Take your seats, please. We're beginning in one minute. Please welcome contestant five, Matt Dever. Eyes on the situation. Eyes on the situation, Matt Dever. first day at work. <laughs> I botched my introduction, stumbled into the wall, and tripped landing down here. You are fired is what I expected to hear. I mean, how would you feel if all that happened with your new boss beside you? Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and friends, that was me 10 years ago. I didn't actually get fired. Instead, I got a diagnosis. My psychiatrist said I had clinical depression. All right, you may feel awkward laughing now. <laughs> it's okay, you can laugh. Humor makes depression easier for me to talk about. Now I imagine my boss firing me. I imagine people judging me. I imagine a giant scarlet bee branded on my chest. Back in reality, my family created the environment to heal my depression. I was lucky to have their eyes on the situation, helping me. All right, quickly, let's review my situation. I was 24 years old. I lived with my parents and brother. I developed thyroid issues on top of diabetes. Plus, depression is common in my family. And then, my mom died. My world was torn apart. I couldn't sleep for months. This led to three moments of truth in my battle with depression. First, I called a therapist. Friends, let me tell you, making that call was hard. To me, that call meant I would forever be introduced as, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the man who put the D in depression, Matt <laughs> Demmer. <laughs> Second, my therapist gave me a depression survey. Shoot, now I really know whether I'm depressed. <laughs> you know how you take a survey and jump straight to the results? My results said, Matt, you are one sad dude. <laughs> Third. I tried meds. I wanted to fix my depression without medication, but I also wanted to sleep. Have you ever not slept for three months? I hope not. Finally, I found the right med. Finally, I slept. These three choices started a slow but permanent recovery. I was lucky my family had eyes on the situation. At each moment of truth, I talked to my brother, my sister, and at the time, my future wife. Do you know what I heard from each of them? Get help. That message gave me the most beautiful feeling. Hope. Why do you think people struggle to acknowledge their depression? I don't know exactly. Shame? Humiliation? Fear? I do know why it was easier for me. My family, of course, but let me explain why. We're at a bar outside West Philadelphia, and a man named Joe sits on a stool. Bartender! One more whiskey! Now, Joe's got a problem. He's an alcoholic. <laughs> His wife said to him, Joe! You need to quit drinking or move out. Have you ever had one too many drinks? So you might understand a little bit of Joe's dilemma. You see, Joe's got two kids and a third on the way. But let me tell you, Joe's not a bad guy. Drinking helps him socialize. It's like barrel. 
By the way, I'm that third kid, and I never saw my dad, Joe, never take one drink. But that doesn't mean we were okay. Fast forward 10 years to February 20th, 1992. Uh, we got a reported domestic violence, 266 Bayer Road, father and son. We're going to need two units to respond. Over. Inside the house felt like a bad lifetime channel movie. My dad and brother wrestled punch and punch and punch and punch and Joe, please stop. My mom screamed. My sister cried. I stood helpless. My dad was depressed for as long as I can remember. He refused to acknowledge it. He denied any treatment. So why do I tell my dad's story? Well, my family talked openly about my dad's issues. Years later, that dialogue helped me put my eyes on my own situation. And my family, we got to a better place. You want to know how we did it? My mom slipped Prozac into my dad's coffee every morning. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Back then, I was mad at my dad. Now I realize acknowledging depression was harder for my dad. He grew up in a different era. Today I see many people, both young and old, Still living in my dad's era, I hear depression is weakness, pain, choice. I wasn't weak. I'm not a failure. Most importantly, it's not a choice. The lifetime risk for depression ranges from one in five to as high as one in two people, depending on the study. So you may be thinking, well, what can I do to help my family and friends? We all need to change the conversation. We start today. Talk to one person about depression. Tell them what you think about depression as weakness, failure, a choice. Change the conversation. Start today. One person, one talk, one step to change the environment for the people in your world. Now, together, we can turn our eyes on the situation. Come on, Mr.